Morning guys, Dr. Corey here with your Monday Motivational Mastery. You've caught me in my home office this morning. Uh, I think I need to brighten the walls a little bit, <laughs> but I hope everyone had a really great weekend. I had uh, an interesting weekend and I'm gonna talk to you about it today. I fell for a computer scam uh, and I got to cancel my credit card and I got locked out of my computer system and I got to completely dump my operating system and reload it. <clears throat> uh, it was definitely quite the weekend. But <laughs> now I have a computer that is more functional than ever, fortunately. Uh, totally clean, running like a beast, and I made the conscious decision like right after this happened to not go down that rabbit hole of oh my god that was so stupid i'm so stupid i made a massive mistake uh it could have been much worse and and <laughs> it took me less than 48 hours to be back up and running and i can thank a number of people for helping me through that process because I definitely could not have done it on my own. But I wanted to talk to you guys today about something that I noticed along the way regarding how I managed this incident, um, how I handled it, because when I reflected upon it, it kind of struck me. And so you know, I've been to the point before where I've wanted to shove my fist through the screen of my laptop for something as silly as like a driver not working, uh, you know, which prevents me from using other devices, blah, blah, blah. It's silly. Um, so, you know, in this situation where I'm, I'm completely locked out of my system, I can't log in. Um, I could certainly have gone down that very low road, flipped my lid, freaked out, and started panicking. But here's what I believe made the difference in how I responded this time. My cat says hi. <laughs> Number one, I have a mindfulness practice. You guys know this about me because I talk about it all the time and how valuable it is. And here's why it's important because mindfulness has been shown to <laughs> shown to reduce stress, shown to increase self-control, increase your sense of objectivity, uh, increase emotional flexibility, improve concentration, um, increase equanimity. That's just that fancy word for feeling like your mind is balanced, okay? And increase self-compassion and self-kindness. So when I went through this experience, you know, what I noticed is that I was calmer than I ever would have been before I began practicing mindfulness. You know, I was well aware of what my body was telling me. <laughs> my heart rate went up. I felt that. I got really hot as I began to think, I'm being taken for a ride here. Um, I noticed the thoughts that were going through my head and they were very clear, um, but I wasn't feeling scattered and I wasn't feeling chaotic. Those were big. The second thing that I believe made a massive difference is that I acquired support from trusted others. And, you know, I find a lot that a lot of people, a lot of my clients, you know, they they are fearful of asking for support. They anticipate um, that they're gonna be judged in some way. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, they are embarrassed, you know, and I, I feel like that comes down to feeling that they're gonna be compared in some way or rejected, um, thought ill of. But guys, connection is one of our most basic psychological needs. It nourishes us, it enhances well-being, it lays down the foundation for a sense of safety, and it helps calm us down when we're in that place where we have the potential 
to go into chaos and stress mode. Connection actually predicts our longevity. So those with the most robust, strong support systems, they're the people that live the longest and they report having the happiest lives and the most contentment. So, you know, it's interesting when we are when we are rejected in some way socially, we actually feel physical pain. This is how important our sense of connection is. Um, if you think of the phrase like, I have a broken heart, literally when one experiences the pain of um, a loss like that with an um, intimate relationship, even a very, very strong close friendship, uh, their physiology demonstrates a pain response, okay? So connection, it alters our motivation as well, um, such that when we're in a relationship with individuals who, who praise us and who support us and who encourage us and who genuinely show a level of interest in, in helping us and in our best interest without demand, without coercion, um, you know, and without some sort of force, uh, we feel this vital energy uh, to pursue, to pursue life, to pursue our goals, to move forward even through, you know, the thoughts that tell us, you know, what if, um, and the potential loss, which we're often kind of making up in our heads. But, you know, that's that the opposite side of the equation when we lack connection oftentimes we will more feel threatened um, and helpless in many ways and so you know in this situation i had one friend who <laughs> he was on the phone and we're like texting back and forth guiding me with just this amazing calm compassionate uh, manner and another another person later who he actually he held me he got home this is my boyfriend he got home I told him what happened and he just said give me a hug <laughs> and he let me know that it would be okay and that we would work on it together and I can't tell you guys how amazing that felt um, it was it was the warmth that was the touch that gave me a, a sense of safety because it's sensory right it brings us back, touch does, to a very embodied, okay, out of the head, out of intellectualism, and into a very embodied understanding of ourselves. And, and when it's warm, and when it's loving, and when it's kind, and when it's, and this is an important piece, when it's accompanied by a certain vocal tone, right, it moves our physiology to a place of calm. He could have hugged me and then he could have said, well, that was stupid. And it would not have had that same effect, clearly. Um, so, you know, I was fortunate in this situation to have had both the intellectual support on the phone and the emotional support and intellectual support here <clears throat> with my boyfriend who was with me. Here's the third thing. I, in that moment, you know, I was asking myself the questions I'm always prompting you guys to ask so that you can rediscover your sense of choice when you start to feel threatened or, and backed into a corner. What are the alternatives, right? And then what about this situation may I influence? Because when we're in situations that are unexpected or outside of our needs and desires, you know, we re we will react a lot of times as if we're being physically threatened. We fight, we freeze, or we flee. And if you look at any of the very difficult times in your life, you may see that you responded in one of those three ways. You either got aggressive, um, you felt so stressed and chaotic that you couldn't do anything and just kind of fell apart or you ran, you avoided, and you acted as if it didn't occur, like denial, right? So it's not unusual to avoid when something feels uncomfortable. We wanna get away from it. But 
you know, what we resist, it will persist. It'll come back at us even harder if we don't acknowledge it. It'll bite us even deeper. Um, and we, we act this way because we don't perceive, like I said, we don't perceive that there are alternatives or there are choices. So <coughs> I was without my laptop, right? What were the alternatives to using it? My old one. <laughs> and <laughs> this is funny. So I get on my old one. It, it's, it's super slow, whatever. Uh, and then I tried open word and it expired two days ago. So I'm using notepad guys. I recognize like th this is small potatoes, but think of in the moment when you've had situations where you think it's, you perceive that it's the end of the world. You act like it is and it isn't. Um, <clears throat> but so I used the question, what about the situation may I influence to move into a space where, you know, now I'm more open to the possibilities. This happened on Friday, right? And I'm flying out of town tomorrow. So I had the thought like, uh, great, what am I gonna do? Um, I can't go on this trip without my computer. Well, yes, I could have. Would it be really inconvenient? Absolutely. But, you know, I could catastrophize about all the things that could potentially not work out as I need or want them to. Or I could ask, what about the situation may I influence? And then what that moves you into, yeah, you open up more because you're present, okay? You're not telling this big ca catastrophic story about the what ifs. You're right here and you're right now. That's the whole point of the question. Because when you're right here, right now, then you perceive your choices. You're front and center. So there's the three, right? Start your mindfulness practice today. Start with five minutes, okay? If you need advice about how to do that, let me know. I can tell you, I can give you a bunch of ideas. Um, acquire support, right? And learn to ask yourself, those questions. What may I influence? What are the alternatives here? All right, guys, enjoy your day. I'm going to get busy on my awesome new operating system computer. Talk to you soon.